took my ferry ride across the Colorado River in California now. Time to hike the Whipple Mountains. Just gotta walk out of town first. 15 miles down a dirt road to get to uh, actual uh, Whipple Mountains and the base of the climb. And I'm uh, probably gonna start tomorrow at this point. It's already 12.30, half the day's over. Don't worry, I'll do some real hiking tomorrow. And this is next, this is the Whipple Mountains. So it's gonna be a long road walk pretty much all day to the base of the mountains over there. And if you were to follow the lake down to where it becomes a river again, you'll meet Parker Dam. And I'm gonna cross back over onto the other side, uh, back into Arizona, another 50 miles or so. Getting pretty close to the base of the Whipple Mountains now. But this area here is called the War Eagle Mine. Bunch of scattered debris. Tonight's campsite, nothing special, just a flat spot here in this wash. Last night was a very calm and uneventful night, full of uh, roughly 11 hours of sleep. So now I'm going to follow this wash for a little ways. This will kind of take me uphill into the, uh, basically the foothills. Pretty much the upper end of the wash that I've been following and now it's time for the real work and start tackling the steep stuff. I knew it was coming. Here's the first pour off. Ow! Ow! Some thorn bushes. This one's no big deal. We'll just climb up this guy. A pretty cool canyon so far. 
lot of stuff to climb over, but uh, you know, in a fun way, it's not that difficult. Move these tumbleweeds out of the way. Look at that thing tumble. That's the canyon I came up this morning. I'm up here on this little saddle. Uh, would have been a nice little camp spot right here if that worked out. View out to the open desert there in California. And the Californian Mojave Desert. And now, this is the ridge line I'm gonna be heading up. All right, this is the crust of the Whipple Mountains. And I'm not all that far away from the high point. I believe that's it right over there. It's only maybe 100 feet higher than where I'm at now. That's the high point there. Really not the most uh, prominent peak or anything, but it's a high point nonetheless. Here she is, highest point in the Whipple Mountains. 4,130 feet. And the summit view. It's a whole lot of nothing, man, just looking out there into the Mojave section of California. I was just about to head down from the summit block and I noticed this bag of cement here, which is one of the most interesting things I think I've ever seen up on top of a mountain. Somebody must have hauled this up here. My guess is as some sort of training thing, you know? And then for whatever reason, they got to the top and dumped it, which is kind of a dick move, but uh, I don't see any other reason to bring a bag of cement up here and then just leave it. So guy must have been training for, for the army or something, you know? And, Brought it up here, or tra you know, training for Everest, or you know, s something. But I'm going to continue along the ridge line and drop down into Whipple Wash. So far, most of the ridge walk up here on the crest has been uh, pretty pretty easy, pretty manageable. Now I'm kind of at the point where if I want to stay up on the ridge, it does get uh, pretty challenging. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is just dipping down off the ridge line for a bit. I've been pretty lucky with the pour offs and everything so far. Um, hey, you know, roll the dice. Be careful about these little trillion balls on the ground. Those are the ones that get you. It's pretty easy to avoid the plant. It's also pretty easy to forget about the little balls on the ground. Just made it down the ridge line, down in the wash now, and I think I've made up my mind I'm gonna follow the wash. Most of the stuff in the upper reaches of this canyon is gonna be a little bit thicker with vegetation less pour-offs and like big obstacles. I just hope I uh, don't regret this decision.
I don't usually buy these, but uh, this is non bread, which is really, really good. And salami and just like cheese slices. I'm kind of just making a big sandwich out of these. This one's no big deal. And you can see this Troya is starting to grow, you know, like new arms and stuff. The ones that I saw in uh, Nevada didn't seem to be growing like this. It's definitely starting to get interesting now, not only because the scenery's improved, it's also improved because it's becoming a little bit more challenging and I may be approaching pour off. Oh. This one's uh, climbable. Good, good. Time to climb down this guy. Start this one like this and probably flip around first chance I get. Oh. I'll try and just do this. Oh, yeah. Whew. There we go. Good foothold. We're good now. There we go. Let's look back up at the climb I just came down. Never looks like much from below. So I'm making good progress down the wash now. Made it past what I think is gonna be the, uh, the biggest challenge in this section of the wash. And there's uh, another one or two spots ahead that could be problematic, but I feel like I'm past the worst of it. Oh, well, we get ourselves another pour off here. I wasn't really expecting this one. This one, you know, you probably shimmy your way down that. Uh, before I do, I'm gonna just check up here really quick and see if we don't have another way that doesn't involve a slide. It's really what it looks like, just a big slide. Yeah, and this is way more manageable. Just down climb this. So 
So that's why I just climbed down to get around the pour off, which is around all this stuff. And yeah, it was kind of rugged. So hopefully that's the last big obstacle in this canyon. Every time I open my mouth, I get one more. So that big uh, rock face there, once I reach that, I'm gonna go left and Whipple Wash continues that way. And then uh, just around the corner here, basically, I'll be meeting up with the route that I would have been taking coming down this ridge line. And I think this route was way faster. I feel like I would have been up on that ridge all day working my way through that stuff. So I'm um, pretty happy with the decision I made to uh, to work the wash instead of the ridge line on this one. And basically at this point, uh, the route I hiked and the route I planned to hike have just met up. And now Whipple Wash continues down into this impressive looking canyon. This is the tallest Choya plant I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty nice wash. Man, what an awesome canyon. There's some cool stuff in the upper reaches of uh, Wibble Wash. Little slot canyon kind of stuff, pour-offs. Nothing like this, you know, this is, this is great. In my opinion, this is way more impressive than the ridgeline was. And it's one of the things I wanted to do a little bit more on this hike, is explore canyons like this. Instead of just thinking about these hikes as, you know, a high route or just uh, some way to Hit as many of the peaks as possible. Wanted to explore more of the canyons. I think this wash is a great example of the wonders that lie below the crest, below the peaks, and not just on top of them. And this is more than just beautiful now. This is just downright majestic. Oh, is that water? That does appear to be water. And you got little frogs swimming around in there. Oh, it stinks. Let's see what else we got down here. I'm less than three miles from the main spring that's supposed to be in this canyon. It's more inclined to draw water from that. Kind of leave that one alone. A little bit of water here in this crack would be pretty hard to draw from that. off there there's another one over there and then this one looks probably the easiest to climb I guess maybe that's actually still a good size drop oh man this one's this one's kind of tricky you know span it with my legs or something I don't know this is overhanging though oh, this one's not good all right, let's see what else, what other options we have. Uh, these are all thorn bushes. Not down that one. Let's see if we can go up and over this rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So we've got an hour before dark. Get about a mile and three quarters to the spring I have marked on the map. It's gonna be kind of close, depending on how the train is ahead and how beautiful it is. I have a hard time just walking right by this stuff without taking a picture. See what I mean? Right about there, pretty nice size arch. Oh. Feels like a shame to be moving so fast through this kind of terrain. All I want to do is kind of go slow and soak it in. I just want to get to water tonight. And the last few miles have just been outstanding. Some of the coolest canyon scenery, I think, along this whole hike. There's all sorts of caves and stuff up there. 30 minutes of daylight left. Right at the base of that mountain there should be my spring, if it's even flowing. Now this is a good sign. Look at all that malachite. Here's another one right here in the wash. Too late for me to do anything with these tonight, you know, to, to look any further, but it means there's uh, copper here somewhere. Okay, and actually this whole outcrop of rocks here has copper in it somewhere. You can see all the green in it, the malachite. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Up here somewhere should be my spring. I just hope it's not dry. I just don't see anything that looks like you know, like one big patch of trees or greenery yet to indicate the spring I'm looking for. This is the spot I got my spring marked. You know, I don't know if it's in this little side canyon here or, you know, maybe just up the way here. Even if I do find the water, I got to set up camp. It'd be just be good to know that I do have water for tomorrow. A dry hole here. Girls and digging for it. Yeah, man, it's all dry. I don't know if it's further up or what. A bummer about the spring. Can't find it. Can't even find where it might be. It's completely dry. Everything's just bone dry. So I'm not getting my water tonight. This is a good example, a good reason why you don't drink all your water when you're thirsty, like the survival uh, advice tells you. Now I've got about a liter and a quarter left. To get me through a couple miles till tomorrow. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna set up camp right over here somewhere and call it a night. Pretty happy with today. Today was an amazing day. Beautiful scenery. Covered 19 miles, which is pretty good for uh, the train I was covering, I think. Well, it's day three now. I brought seven liters with me. Three liters the first day, three liters yesterday. I've got a half a liter water left. Uh, if I go this way, there's like two or three springs marked on the map. If I go this way, there's a big ass reservoir and I don't have to worry about collecting water from some tiny little spring that has, you know, frogs and tadpoles and, um, you know, whatever else growing in it at best, right? So I'm going that way. Let's get some water. And this is the canyon I walked a little ways up last night looking for water. Today I have to walk the whole thing up to the top.
to a little pass. Well, on the bright side, my pack feels light as hell without any water in it. <laughs> so there's that. I just came to this big puddle. I was not expecting this here. It does not look particularly appetizing, uh, but it is water. I'm probably the self-proclaimed king of passing up water sources when I see them. But to me, it doesn't make any sense filtering this water when I'm less than five miles away from a lake, basically a huge lake. So, you know, I could filter this water. It's going to clog up my Sawyer filter. I'm going to have to uh, back flush it every, you know, every liter, every other liter. So I'm going to pass this up. I'm going to mark it down on the map. But I'm going to pass this up. Just keep walking. It's actually like the narrowest part of the canyon. It looks like it opens up from here. And this is pretty nice too. It's a huge cave up there too, wow. I've seen a ton of burrow scat in this area, and I haven't seen a single burrow. For lack of better terms, they probably moved on to greener pastures. So little water here. Almost over the little pass, the wash is becoming quite thick. It's quite a pain to walk through. Now I've hit this road. my water copper basin reservoir I'm thirsty I hope they got enough for me ah oh, man you gotta be kidding me did not see this coming Ah, oh, this sucks. You know, I saw online there was access to this reservoir. You know, people uh, four by fouring and you know, my whole route across this, ah, oh, this sucks. This sucks. Oh, you can't even loiter here. Give me a break. I just had a chance to look at my map. Really my only option is to backtrack a little bit along the base of these mountains and then uh, look like there was a spot I could probably climb up. It's going to be like 600 foot to go up and over that. Drop down on the other side. A couple miles away is the road. So, man, I'm thirsty. I'm glad I didn't drink my last three ounces of water or whatever I have left. All right, let's get it over with. So if you look up here, you can kind of see like a, a line, a bit of a, a weakness, I guess. That's probably going to be my route up and over, according to my map. This is how much water I have left. Just stopped to take a break. I was really hungry. So I drank like one ounce of water. Probably got like four ounces in here, maybe. I don't think I've ever seen a reservoir that was closed to the public. They're almost always open for recreational purposes, you know, fishing or whatever. I don't see any reason why it would just be closed completely to the public, menacing no trespassing signs and stuff like that. 
It's so disappointing. The terrain's like all this volcanic rock. It's kind of sharp and just like weird shapes. It's just so thick. That's the last thing I want to see right now. Unfortunately, I found a little path around the first batch of all that vegetation. Oh, it's such a cruel sight looking back at that water. Oh, man, this whole situation is messed up. I'm so thirsty. Nice view. Really nice view. Right, so I came up on the little pass here. Instead of dropping down there, it looked a little bit steeper. So I went up and over this little hump. Uh, but then this all looks a little bit better, a little bit less vertical than the other side. I see a dirt road down there. You get a mining claim post here. I don't see any of the other ones, but you know, somebody's been up here. We've got a vein of some copper type mineral here. We've got more malachite. And then it looks like you can see all the silver here. I think that's a lead um, or galena. Yeah, that might be what that is, which is sometimes found with copper. Pretty cool. Here's yet another occurrence of copper. I guess that's why they call this area Copper Basin, at least the basin over. You can just see the veins of it. It's right here, just running through the ground. How cool is that? You know, I walk a lot of miles and I never see stuff like this. It's pretty rare. Wow, and look at this one. I'm guessing this is, this is lead, galena. And this wash is called Black Metal Wash. Pretty cool name. I'm officially out of water. Not all that far from a dirt road. I can follow that dirt road to a paved road, which doesn't get a whole lot of traffic. Uh, but if I follow that paved road, it'll take me over to the Parker Dam. And pedestrians are not allowed to cross that dam. So I'm gonna have to thumb it across. I'm on my paved road. I think it's something like seven or eight miles now to the dam. Other side of the dam. There's a Conoco gas station. And then uh, I'm gonna fill up on water and new Gatorade or whatever. And then uh, right behind that gas station is where I continue my route back into the mountains. Just got my ride across the Parker Dam. Got a ride to the old Conoco gas station there, the, the Hezron Fuel. And uh, talked to a kind of eccentric guy, but he uh, ended up buying me some Hot Pockets and a Monster Energy drink. Um, that's on top of the two gallons of water I picked up. So I took six with me and I chugged two liters. I drank a liter of Gatorade and uh, feeling pretty hydrated now. Uh, so basically I drank uh, about three and a half liters of fluid and I still don't have to piss.
and I've got about a 1500 foot climb to get up to the top of the mesa and the mesa is actually called the mesa not kidding if you look at the map it just says the mesa the Hayden Roads aqueduct runs through here and the aqueduct basically originates from the Colorado River California pumps water to the coast from the Colorado River in Arizona basically does the same it supplies Phoenix with water and all originates from basically this one spot near the Parker Dam hey, there's another saguaro I saw two more of them this morning on the California side What a cool canyon this is. Another awesome canyon. Ooh, that one climbs up a little bit. Easy climb though. The wash has kind of turned into a big boulder field now and I'm approaching the steepest part of the climb up here in this canyon. It's getting steep now. It's pretty much the crux of the canyon, right at the top. Pretty much the final obstacle here. Before I reach the top, looks like it's gonna be a fun climb. So it looks like I got two options to reach the top. I've got this chute here, and then a series of ledges that lead around to the top of this pour off. Take this ledge out here. Oh. Yeah, watch out for that. Uh, then I've got like a chute that leads up there. It looks pretty loose and precarious. All right, hold on for dear life. Sweet, sweet life. Oh, how I love thee. Oh, and see, look, that's what you gotta watch out for. This stuff's loose, you know? It's all the stuff you wanna grab for handhold. You gotta be really careful. Try and use this stuff for balance more than actually putting weight on it, you know? This whole boulder feels a little loose here. Actually, that's a little disturbing. Got this cactus right here. I don't want to need, ow, I was going to say I don't want to need that, and I just did it. Not a whole lot of options here. Oh, wow, this is a pretty ledgy route, that's for sure. Okay. That's some exposure, boy. 
from exposed to exposure. Okay, around this one. Yeah, buddy. Woo! Now that was a climb. You get the blood flowing a little bit. Oh man, look at that view. Just beautiful. Excellent walk. Last time to climb out of this guy. Find a place to camp. Well, hello, Saguaro. It's pretty hell bent on camping up on the rim tonight. 40, 40 minutes of daylight left, tops. I think I got like another 400 feet actually to go. Kind of like an upper basin thing, so. And I have to hurry now. It's pretty beautiful. Fortunately, I don't have to go this way. It looks pretty rugged. Instead, I've got a little bit more mellow looking canyon. Yeah, more mellow looking on the map, but definitely a lot thicker. A little bit of an overhanging pour off here to climb. That rock's really gonna help me out. If it wasn't for that, I don't think this one would be possible. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, this is super awkward. All right. Oh man, look at that. All right, now this is the final canyon before I reach the very top of the mesa. This doesn't look like much on the map. Definitely looks challenging though at the end. I don't really and see see an obvious path up. No way to know until you get right up right up on it. Oh man, I've been hoofing it. I'm trying to beat the onset of darkness here. That is not looking good. That's like a sheer cliff. Just hoping I can work my way up there. And then up. I really don't want to be fumbling around through this drain. My headlamp. Huh. <sighs> Come on. Come on. <sighs> oh, that's that's what I'm working with. I think I think it it can work. Just climb my way up. <sighs> bush oh geez this one got me it's like got my entire glove almost sits up oh wow that's an incredible view Now I'm up at the top. I just gotta find a place to camp. People probably don't associate hiking with like a high adrenaline type uh, sporting activity, but I mean, it really can be if you push yourself. This is why I do these off trail hikes for this feeling right now. All right, we got a four by four path. I'll just follow this until I can find a place to camp. I'm just trying to jog a little bit here and try and get to a spot on the map where it looks like it might be a good spot to camp. About a half mile away. And unfortunately, I got all the way up here, got to the spot where I'd like to camp and there's just really no good campsites. I guess I don't have much choice camp in the poof dirt.
to look at last night's camp. This is a little rock wall I made to kind of block the wind. It was coming from this direction. Of course, the wind died down shortly after sunset. It wasn't really needed. But when that wind was whipping, man, all sorts of this poof dirt was just flying around inside my tent, getting all over everything. Awesome view. It's the Bill Williams River down here. And today I'm just gonna walk the edge of this mesa. Last night I camped uh, probably right there where that little notch is. I believe that's where the road ends and then the rest of that mesa juts out. And then, you know, kind of walk my way all the way around to this point. And then there's all these points that jet out here and offer nice scenic views. So my goal is to hit up a couple of these along the way instead of just walking right by them. And now this would have been a decent camp spot. Would have had to move some rocks out of the way, but right on the edge and everything. Man, what a view. And you know, as barren as it looks down there, I almost wonder if a forest fire rolled through here. Yeah, you know, it's green down here. And it's green over here. Pretty charred, pretty brown. Pretty ugly looking, actually. Otherwise, you know, this would be a pretty beautiful spot. A little valley filled with some color at this time of the year. Be a really nice thing. You know, a lot of people don't realize the inside of these cactus is actually wood. You can see a dead one right here. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, but you're a bastard. The road kind of follows roughly the edge, but you know, not quite close enough to get a view. So every now and then, just leave the road and uh, try and get to the edge and get a decent view. My plan was to go all the way out to the end of this mesa, uh, you know, and then there's really, this is sort of jets out and then you have to come all the way back and it's like a mile or more each way. You kind of start looking at that and it's like, all right, well, you know, two miles for, for one view that I've pretty much already seen. It's an excellent view, uh, but I don't know what additional is to be gained from this view that I haven't already seen, you know, from over here. And besides that, it's all burned down there, you know? So, you know, these are the kind of questions that I grapple with on a daily basis. So I decided to go for the Mesa, heading there now. You know, it's gonna take me about an hour out of my way, but I guess that's why I'm out here, right? You know, to see all these things that I plotted out, you know? This is the end of the Mesa. Long way to walk to get a couple of pictures, but here we are. At least I get a nice view of a little bit more greenery down here in the valley than the than the burned out section that was behind me. That all looks pretty nice. All right, well, you know, it was a good view, but I was kind of surprised with the lack of campsites at the end of these mesas. I thought that with these four by four roads leading to the to the edges, some of the people that would come out here would at least 
you know, have a little cleared flat spot to camp or something, but really hasn't been the case. I would thought about walking the edge of this rim here just to get this awesome view, you know, the whole, the whole walk back, but I figure I'll just go out to the edge here, get one quick peek at it, and then head back to the road and take a quick walk back. Oddly enough, I almost enjoy this view better than the, the view on the other side. I almost walked right by this one, you know. <laughs> this big sweeping canyon here. I love canyons like this. The vertical drop off, you know. I don't know what it is about this type of view, but I've always kind of been drawn to these type of canyons. These type of mesas. Good stuff. I said I wouldn't walk the edge of this. Mesa, I said I'd walk the road, but here I am walking the edge of this mesa, you know. Man, I'm really digging these views. This road has actually been quite scenic. It's time to leave this road, this ridge line, and start dropping an elevation. My map shows a 4x4 road, and uh, apparently this one doesn't get used anymore. I, I've walked right by it, I didn't even see it. Just got these dark colored rocks here, but yeah, this is it. Old 4x4 road. There's definitely not a lot of shade around. But I just came to this tree. So this is going to be my lunch spot. And now I'm kind of looking at the route I have ahead of me. Basically just going to keep following this dirt road downhill for a ways and hit a wash. There's a canyon that runs through here. There's a guzzler that has some water. And then ultimately out in the, the big flat plains out there. It's called the Cactus Plain. left the road now. Just making my own path here through the desert. It's the first antler shed I found in this whole this whole route. Really haven't seen any deer. In fact I haven't seen a single one. According to my map, it's a guzzler right on top of that hill. Let's check it out. There it is. It exists. Now does it have water? And can I get to it? The animals are drinking. They're drunk. Yeah, this thing's way larger, way more elaborate than the ones they have in uh, Nevada. Rainwater falls on this, drains down into this, it's stored in tanks, and then it's piped down to the drinker for the animals to access. This tank the water is stored in. Yeah, it's not it's not even that bad, you know? It's pretty clear. The aqueduct is actually about a half a mile away from the guzzler, and in fact, it runs underground right underneath the guzzler, so it could be piped into the guzzler somehow for like a permanent water source.
That's it for the guzzler. I can find out real quick if I can access the water that's in the aqueduct further up. And I know there's going to be water. It's 100%, you know. I, I'm not, not questioning that, right? It's only a matter if I can access it. So anyways, I took three liters with me. Chugged a liter and a half. Cleaned up a little bit. Actually feeling refreshed for once. There it is, there's the aqueduct. It's the Hayden Roads Aqueduct, which supplies water to the city of Phoenix from the Colorado River. And basically right at this point, it goes underground. Yeah, so this next part of the walk, it's not gonna be the most interesting. And unfortunately, this part of the state, there's just really no good way to connect everything. This is kind of the best way. I think it's just gonna be the most direct. It's not the most scenic, you know? Here it is. There's actually some really good flow to this. As far as accessing that water too, you know, that's sort of a steep bank really going down. That's not really the kind of thing you want to be crawling down to and scooping up a bottle of water out of this. <sighs> this is not turning out the way I'd hoped. And I also wish I would have brought more than three liters with me now. There's a car up there. Like an awning, looks like some sort of trailhead or something. Let's see what this sign has to say. Day use area. 16 and a half feet deep, 24 feet across. Uh, the entire length of the canal is fenced to protect safety. It's also monitored 24 hours a day by remote cameras and alarms at all the pumping stations. Well, I was planning to stay on the other side of the aqueduct. But since there's so few places to cross it, I decided I'd cross here at this road. There is one further down, but I don't want to chance it. It's just so happened a couple people were driving by, checking my maps. They stopped and gave me this water. So instead of three liters now, well, I got like six plus. So I am good to go. And so now this is basically my route. I'm just going to follow this fence line. It's gonna be like 20 miles into town. Something like maybe, I don't know, like 12 miles or something along the fence line, I think. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe another eight in the town. I'm just glad that there's this path to follow here along the fence line because on the other side, when I first started walking this, there wasn't anything like this. It just, you know, you'd be walking off trail if you wanted to walk along the fence line. So at least this gives me a path to walk. Well, this is kind of interesting. A bunch of seashells just piled up here. They must collect in the aqueduct and then they just clean them out and like throw them aside. See prohibentrar. No humans. Actually, it just says no men. Guess women are allowed. Guess this tunnel goes under the aqueduct. I guess if I needed to cross, I could. The hum of these power lines sounds like some sort of futuristic laser battle. Drove my chaffy to the levee, but the levee was fenced off. And I, I couldn't get to the levee to, to drive it. Ah, <sighs> such a dork. Nice sunset though, accentuated by these uh, power lines. I just climbed up to the top of this hill, basically just following the road. I was hoping there'd be a place to camp up here, but I don't see anything. Except a nice sunset in the city of Tucson's uh, water supply. It's supposed to be cloudy tomorrow. That's kind of moving in tonight. And that's making a pretty nice sunset. Something I haven't had like this this whole trip, really. It's been just bluebird skies every day, you know? And it's the clouds that make these beautiful sunsets. 
Well, tonight there's plenty of flat places to camp. It's just all rocky. Well, somewhere down here in this wash should probably work. Man, what a weird vibe it is waking up to this cloudy weather. Big vertical shaft here. This one's definitely not gated off. There's another one. It goes down 10 feet. Found this guy this morning. I figure I've got maybe 20 or 22 miles before I get to uh, the town of Baus today. Thing is about Baus, pretty small pathetic town to be honest they have one cafe that's open till 2 30 p.m so it's like breakfast and luncheon only and then they have a bar that closes at like 5 30 or 6 so if i get there i probably won't have anything to eat anyway and uh there's like a little rv park that i'm hoping they'll just let me set up a, a tent there because it's set up for rvs only you know we've got electrical hookups and stuff it's been a while since i've seen one of these just a horizontal mine shaft you can actually just walk into. Might as well drop the pack. Check her out. I don't even need my headlamp for this one. This one does not go that far back. I mean, really not much for me to see in here. In fact, it seemed like most of the interesting colors. Colors, yeah, here's some, some uh, malachite. Yeah, actually. Quite a bit, actually, if you look around on the on the ceiling or some. And for me, as a pretty amateur rock hound, uh, kind of just at the point where I want to collect like one sample of, you know, each mineral I find. You know, I found malachite, I found azurite, cool. But after a while, then you start to uh, seek out higher quality specimens, and I've got a fair amount of pieces of malachite now and probably a couple chunks of chrysocolla and azurite and stuff but none of them are very good you know so i always check these things out and just see if i can find a better quality sample the more of these deposits you check out the more likely it is you're going to find something good so it's kind of a fun hobby in that way And the sign over there, it says 12. And I've noticed these numbers have been going up. Pretty sure that's just the, the mile number along the aqueduct. So it's probably 12 miles from the Colorado River. And this aqueduct spans 336 miles. Oh. Glad I'm not going that far. Right, here you go, here's some four by four razor people, some razor folk. Here's the second bridge that goes over the aqueduct. That's the last one I'll cross. A couple of 4 by 4 guys just drove by. For me, back down to the fence line. I saw this set off the road here. Figured I'd check it out. Relics of what once was. She dry. A couple of beer cans though. Somebody's been in here drinking. It's a helicopter. Probably coming to see what the hell a hiker's doing walking along this thing. This guy's literally flying right over the aqueduct too. Didn't think they bothered to patrol this. So these saguaros are pretty interesting plants. The average lifespan is something like 150 to 175 years. And it takes about 50 to 75 years just to grow their first arm. And the arms are important because, you know, they help them store more water. The more arms they have, the more water they can store, the longer they can survive. And these saguaros can live to be over 200 years old. 
and now intermittently there's the sand dunes are kind of encroaching on the fence line here and it just makes it awful to walk through it's the end of the walk along the aqueduct for me probably walked uh i think it's 13 14 miles somewhere something like that and this is uh, marked as an old railroad grade on the map. Um, but now I follow this for another 8 or 10 miles into Bouse. One last look at the aqueduct. It's pretty much like it did on the other side. And you can definitely notice the water's not flowing as fast here. Man, it was like pretty strong current before. Now it's basically like standstill. But that would have been coming out of the, the pumps and everything down at the other end. So... A little bit more force to it and you can see the ladder going down there in case you get stuck down in the water you got a way to climb out they thought of everything about 11 30 now uh, the cafe closes at 2 30 so if i hurry there's a good chance i can get there surprisingly right before closing i hear something weird right off the side of the road the heck is that? Uh, it's a mattress. <laughs> I was thinking it's some sort of, uh, I don't know, like a parachute or something, you know? The lovable locals out here dumping their mattresses in the desert. This is kind of weird. You got this big rock circle here all the way around in the middle, a giant H. I mean, is this really a helicopter? landing spot seems a little makeshift for that the helicopter uh, landing spot back there it's probably the Baus International Airport wait till you see the pathetic town of Baus that'll make sense <laughs> just walking as fast as I can trying to beat the onset of this rain which kind of looks imminent at the moment and this is the Arizona Peace Trail yes it's a 4x4 trail or something Oh, this is interesting. Welcome to Baus. I guess this is where the message board would someday go. Welcome to Baus. We have nothing to offer. I'm about a mile and a half out from the cafe now. So I've, I'll get there about 45 minutes before they close, which is plenty of time. And then those are all the Plamosa Mountains on the other side of the valley over there. And that's where I'm headed for the next section. Now this is it, the town of Baus. All right, time to get some food, hot meal. 